Join us today on Real Life Cooking as we make chicken parmesan with Cody Ford of the Buffalo Bills. The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now, the Bills are making it happen. Oh, I need to come for the season. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say you win. What's up, Cody? How you doing? I'm good. Excited to cook today? Something like that. There you are. Hey, Cody. Welcome to Real Life Cooking. What's up? Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Where, where are you right now? I'm in uh, Norman, Oklahoma. <laughs> chilling. Oh, it got frozen. You're, oh, you're chilling. What do you do all day now that you're not? Shouldn't you be starting to train right now, Rick? Uh, I think we start next week. Oh. I think. Yeah, we start next week. But I'm playing the Xbox for right now. Only oh, okay, so you're training your fingers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so let's just welcome everyone. For everyone that who does not know who this is, which how could you not know who Cody Ford is? He is a player for the Buffalo Bills in New York. Um, and today we're going to be making chicken parmesan together. So, and some we also have some viewers that cook along, Cody. So you're going to be teaching people how to cook too. Aren't you excited about that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me get let me get my chef on. Let me get my chef on. <laughs> All right, so let's get started because it does take a little bit of time. Um, and also, guys, if you have any questions for me or for Cody, feel free to drop them in the box below, and Christopher will relay them to us, and we will answer questions live as well. Um, so, Cody, the first thing that we need to do is grab our chicken breast. We're gonna be making stuffed spinach stuffed chicken breast today. All right, hold on. My assistant, my assistant not being such a good assistant. <laughs> your sous chef, your sous chef over there is slacking. Yeah, she big lacking. That's what we gonna call that. Big lacking? Don't say that. She sent me a very nice setup of how she had everything set up for you. Uh, I ain't trying to get it. How many you got? I have three. All right. So we're gonna lay those out on our cutting board, and then we're gonna because we're stuffing these. We need to cut like a little slit inside of them so we have somewhere to put the stuffing. Um, so I'm gonna grab my knife. And we're gonna, oh, you already know what to do. You're already over here cutting, so it's slitting already. So Thank you, gonna... <laughs> have you, you know where I'm from, I'm from the boot, so you know. Oh, so you know how to cut. This I've, been doing this since, I've been doing this since I was three. Oh, okay. Me too. No, I'm lying. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're going to cut our little slits inside our chicken. So, they look like this for just the viewers or anyone that might be watching. We made a little pocket inside. You have a question? Someone said that they're making um, this this week. So, it's been, it's been a lot. Oh, nice. So, we have three little pockets inside of our chicken. And then, now that my hands are all chickeny, we want to go ahead and um, season these with salt and pepper. So I'm going to rinse off my hands before I grab my pepper and salt. Big fan. You want to um, sprinkle your salt in really high, so you know it seasons everything better, right? Like salt bay. Well, I'm, just, um, <laughs> I'm better than salt bay. Okay. Oh, Cody's better than salt bay. All right. Let's see how Cody salts. You know, <laughs> good. Uh, good I salt just the regular way. That's why I, mean, I keep mine traditional. You feel me? That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I'm old school with mine. Nice and traditional. Oh, some, of, some of Cody's family members don't know cooking next Christmas. What'd you say? Oh, so some of, your, some of your family members said that you'll definitely be cooking next Christmas. Drawing off your skills now. I didn't agree to none of that. <laughs> uh, 
Garrison said, please teach this boy something. Boy. Garrison said, please teach you something. <laughs> Ask Garrison how his lettuce wraps was since he got how jokes. His, how his what? His lettuce wraps. Oh, his lettuce wraps. Garrison, you made some good lettuce wraps? All right, now, Cody, we're going to make a little mixture that is even going to further marinate our chicken. We're going to put in um, some milk, the cup of milk, and our Italian seasoning in the milk. Do we have a question? Um, Jack, about what type of salt is it? Oh, I am using kosher salt. It looked like Cody was over there using iodized salt. Yeah, I just got the great value, you feel me? Plain. <laughs> I got plain salt. The other one, I don't know. I don't even know how to use these, but. Oh, the little grinder? That's sea salt. That's my preference when yeah. I am cooking. I don't mean to mess with all that. <laughs> Cody does not mess with all that sea salt of it all. Yeah, facts. All right, so we have our milk and our Italian seasoning in our bowl. And then we're going to put our chicken in. You said put the chicken in there? All right. Yep. I find that when you're making chicken parmesan, when you put it in milk, it, or seasoned milk, it really adds like a nice moistness and flavor to your chicken parmesan. Cool. Question? Um, how much seasoning? And I'm, someone said I'm not crazy about breasts. Can I use boneless thighs? You could use boneless thighs. Um, traditionally, chicken parmesan is made with breasts. Just I don't actually know why. Um, it might be harder to stuff the chicken thighs because there's not as much thickness in them generally. But you could definitely do it. Um, be they'll be greasier too, for sure. And then. So if anyone's just joining us, we have a special guest, Cody Ford, showing off his chefing skills tonight. <laughs> you put all three in the bowl? Yep, I put all three. They all right. barely fit. Right. Big bit. <laughs> Question? Oh, uh, what are you stuffing them with? That's the one we are, so yeah, so someone just asked what we're stuffing them with. We're going to stuff them with spinach, which is what we're going to start working on now. Um, we're going to grab the onion and your knife again. Actually, let me grab a whole onion so I can show you. And we are going to use only half of this onion, and we're going to dice it. Um, I will show you how, but maybe Cody has a better way since he's the big chef, apparently, in this. <laughs> I, I suck at uh, <laughs> I suck at the onion. So basically, just so you know, you're holding your knife. You always want to hold your knife with your thumb right here and rotate your knife like this. Question? Um, also, they said, what's the purpose of the milk? The milk keeps the chicken moist when we go to cook it. So we just, I just took off the top of the onion, not the, not the hairy part, but the other part. And then I like to turn it on its flat surface we just made, and then cut it like this. And we're only going to use half, so we only need half. And then peel back the... In. We're not going to eat that. They were asking if Cody can adjust the camera so they can see his actual food. Oh, Cody, we can't see your food or your face. <laughs> can you adjust your camera one way or the other? Can you ask the sous chef to do it? Or the sous chef, please. <laughs> do something. <laughs> do something. Don't, don't talk to my friend like that. <laughs> she ain't helping. <laughs> can you see the face now? Yeah, we can see space now. Yeah. All right, so now once we have our onion like this, we're going to put it flat with the hairs. Are you left-handed or right-handed, Cody? I'm right-handed. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're going to put the hairs to our left hand and put our hand on top of the onion. Oh, you can't see mine either, really. Let me tilt it. There you go. Put our hand on top of the onion and run our knife through like this. They can't see the food. Yeah, they can't see the food. It doesn't matter. You used to get to see it at the end. Okay, they want to see him actually cut it in. People are, people are, <laughs> people are going in on him. Carly, can you adjust the camera? Or Sue Chef, can you adjust the camera to see his onion cutting skills for now? A little further down. There we go. Uh-oh, now, Cody, don't cut yourself. Your hands are important for your job, for sure. <laughs> 
Okay. All right, and then you're gonna turn the onion back so the hairs are facing away from you and run your tip of your knife through like this. <laughs> Somebody said Cody's gonna cut his hand off. No, no, do not put that juju in the world. Why are they wishing that why they wishing that on me, yo? So then well, you, you did sure. the you, <laughs> you did the vertical cuts, right? So now we're gonna turn it back the way we had it with the hairs to the left hand and then run your knife through up and down and you should end up with a nice dice. The goal. That's the goal. Like I did something wrong for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yep, there you go. Question? Are you are you guys a fan of Chef Paul's Crowd Home Magic Spice? Chef Paul's have you heard of Chef Paul's home magic spice, Cody? Who me? Yeah. No. I've never heard of it either. <laughs> Someone no, just no. asked if we knew about it, but I've never heard of it. All right, awesome. So now that your onion is chopped, are the pieces like pretty small or are they gigantic? No, they're pretty small. Okay, good. Now we're gonna saute our onion. So we are going to heat up a pan with some olive oil, like a tablespoon or so. You want me to chop this? <laughs> Sous chef, what's going on over there? We might need a little smaller onion. Really going on. she just it's rustic. Your, your feelings can be rustic. She's running her mouth. <laughs> so then once our onion's chopped, we're going to put it in our pan and start to saute it. So, Cody, do you like chicken parm John? What's your like go-to dinner nowadays? Uh, Hello Fresh. <laughs> Hello Fresh? <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's like a meal kit, right? Uh, one more time? That's a meal kit? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't really call it that. They just send you the ingredients and all you gotta do is cook it. Mm. And are you doing the cooking in your house? Or is your shoe chef doing the cooking in your house? Both of us. No, I do all the cooking. But <laughs> that's because I'm different. I imagine that you have a pretty healthy appetite, considering the size of you. <laughs> uh, I eat. I can eat. You can eat? I can eat. All right. Is, so is your onion in the pan now? Yeah, they in there. All right. So you want to season that with some salt. And we're gonna let it saute until it's like translucent or so. They say can't have jokes. Ah! You're talking about, about its size. Oh my gosh, finally, so finally someone oh. thinks I'm funny. Oh no. Chris never thinks I'm funny and I'm always having to laugh at my own jokes. And now someone recognizes it. Thank you. <laughs> Chris not funny though, so it's not even, <laughs> he can't he can't talk about nobody else. <laughs> All right, so you season your onion, right, Cody? Yeah, I put some salt you, you want to start to build the layers of flavor that are going to go inside. Um, the next thing that we want to do is grab our spinach because we're just going to saute our spinach with our onion. But we want to give our onion like a minute or two so it can start to develop some flavor. Oh, also, um, turn your oven on to 400. My dainty oven. Um, does the onion stay quite long if you leave the outer skin on it? Yeah, if you have, like, say if you have half of an onion, well, we have half of an onion left, if you just wrap this in plastic wrap, it'll last for at least a week, um, and it does last better when the skin is on there. Um, it's like a protective layer. Also, Cody, your cousin Ethan Klein is in the chat watching. My cousin, my cousin did what? Your cousin Ethan is here. Oh, hello. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to add in our spinach to this. I don't how much spinach do you have over there, Cody? I got quite um Oh, that's good. So you probably want to use like we're making 3, so like half of that bag. I'm going to use half of this box. All right. Ooh, fire. And 
And now we're just gonna like saute this. <laughs> Do you eat what's your favorite vegetable, buddy? My favorite vegetable? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean I don't really eat vegetables. But I I broccoli I eat broccoli. Broccoli? Oh good, we're making broccoli tonight. Yeah, I like broccoli. Christopher, you're not a fan of spinach. Okay, Cody, I'm a long-time fan of yours. You need to give me the world to me if I can get an autograph. <laughs> All right, so you want to make sure you're moving your spinach around with your onions so it's not burning. And it's just going to wilt down. Uh, Cody, your mom said you need a beer in your hand. There's a what? You need a beer in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, you're going to have to do it. Alright, so your spinach is going to look like this. It doesn't need to be like all the way super cooked hard because we're going to stuff it in. Oh. Wow. Yep, perfect. On, so now sir. we're going to um, move this into a bowl so it can start to cool down a little bit so we're not burning ourselves when we do the next step. And we're going to need this, we're going to need this pan again. So... Just try to get everything out. You don't, you are not going to have to wash it though. It should look clean after you're done. All right. We're going to add some garlic powder to this mixture, like a teaspoon, or measure with your heart. Have Cody move the bowl to his cooking board so people can see. Oh, Cody, move your bowl. Yeah. Thank you. A teaspoon or so. Or so, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we're gonna add in our mozzarella cheese to this mixture. How much the whole bag? Uh, no, I have half of a bag, so like half the bag. All right. <laughs> All my <bags> cheese. <laughs> and then you just want to kind of mix this around. And then also, at this point, it would be a good point to taste this to see if you want to add more salt or if you want to add pepper. B. Ristiful Merrill said you guys are doing a great job. Oh, B. Ristiful Merrill said we're doing great, Cody. Are you excited? Appreciate that. <laughs> Can you explain what's in that bowl? Oh, yeah. So if you guys are just joining us, we have special guest Cody Ford from the Buffalo Bills, and we are making... Ch stuffed chicken parmesan. So we have already marinated our chicken a little bit. We just made our stuffing, which is our spinach and mozzarella cheese and some onion. And we also put some garlic powder in here. And we are now going to set this aside while we get our breading mixture ready for our next step. So whenever I make chicken parmesan, I like to make my breading mixture on a plate. Um, just because I find it's easier to dip your chicken into onto a plate. So we're going to grab a plate. And then we're going to put, actually, I don't need this. We're going to grab our breadcrumbs and our Parmesan cheese. With our question. Nope. Oh. Hold on, wait. They're talking about Cody has so much mozzarella and cheese in this thing. He's got to eat <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's not what we what? talk about while we're cooking. <laughs> All right, so we're making the crispy exterior to our breading or for our chicken parmesan. So about for three chicken breasts, we need about two cups of uh, the panko. Do you guys have regular breadcrumbs or panko? Oh, uh, we got both, but somebody told me to use breadcrumbs. Oh, somebody told you. Did I tell you to use breadcrumbs? <laughs> somebody else told me. I, I have panko. Oh, I personally, I mean, I'll let you, you can make the decision. Panko makes your chicken parmesan crispier, where breadcrumbs is not going to get as crispy. So whatever your preference is. Oh, well, we can... want crispy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, 
I like how you're measuring over there, Cody. Very, very exact, very specific. If I don't, I'll put way too much for sure. <laughs> and then we're going to mix in a cup of our cheese to our breadcrumb. And Cody has the, like, more shredded version. I have a more powdery version. Both versions work. Um, and right now, I don't know. How are the grocery stores in Oklahoma? Because the grocery stores in New York right now are kind of insane. It's like uh, everything. Ours are kind of cool. Like, Target has more stuff than you would think. And then Walmart would have all right amount of stuff. But, yeah, it's never been like, oh, dang. This is annoying. Oh, really? You guys don't have to, like, wait in line or anything? Uh, We only did one day, but I think it was because it was, like, Saturday or Sunday. Oh, I see. Um, We have a question. Um, Still mozzarella. Which cheese are you using? This one, we just added Parmesan cheese to our panko, to our, pan our breadcrumbs or panko. And we're going to also, Cody, season this with some salt and pepper. Um, And sometimes I like to put garlic powder in here, too. Uh, But it does make your uh breading, like, get browner faster so you'll have to be if you do put it in you have to be careful um when you cook it later questions also cody ford's uh grandmother is watching shirley ford we love shirley remember her at the draft oh yeah that's our friend a cup nikki a cup of parmesan grandma yeah, shirley your gra grandma shirley's watching grandma shirley go crazy <laughs> <laughs> we love her So we're going to have the most flavorful chicken parmesan because we've seasoned and marinated our chicken. We're seasoning our breadcrumbs. So, and we season our stuffing. So everything has seasoning in it. Mm. So we're not going to season at the very end and it'll be too salty. Mm. So the next step that we're going to do is um, put our eggs into our seasoning or not into our seasoning. We're going to move our breadcrumbs to the side. We're going to bring our chicken back over. And we are going to put our eggs into this mixture. Now, I like to put my egg. I, you could try to crust it without the egg, but the egg is really what helps make the breading stick. Question? Uh, can you recap the seasoning on the chicken? Yes. So in, the, in this bowl, we have um, Italian seasoning and milk. And we season our chicken with salt and pepper before we put it in the bowl. And then for the panko, we put in... Um, of salt, Parmesan cheese, and pepper. And now we're just mixing our egg with our chicken. And I should have told you we're going to have another plate before we started this, because we're going to have to wash our hands twice now. <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, I didn't know I was going to get uh... <laughs> You weren't ready for this? This mess? Yeah, somebody didn't make me sign a waiver for all this. <laughs> what is it? Someone need to make him sign a waiver. <laughs> Oh, would that be your agent? <laughs> <laughs> it can't be nobody else. <laughs> but look, at the end of it, you'll end up with a great meal. You'll end up with your delicious chicken parmesan. Yeah, you All right. So, we have our chicken. So, if we were not on real life cooking, you could let your milk and chicken mixture sit for like four hours or even overnight. And all that's going to do is add flavor to your chicken. But since Real Life Cooking is all about making a meal from start to finish in an hour, we're going to go ahead and start cooking our chicken or move on to that process. And um, this part is also pretty messy, but it's just one step. We are just going to dredge it in our panko and then put it on a plate to be ready to start cooking. So we're just going to take our chicken and dip it in our panko one way dip it in the other way and you know feel free to like really rub it around in there so it gets a nice coating of it and panko for people who do not know is a japanese breadcrumb it's used a lot in like tempura and stuff for real mm -hmm. panko don't sound japanese <laughs> Yeah. It is. Question? Granny Sherry is watching. It's a, now the one granny that called, I gotta call the other granny. Oh, Granny Sherry wants you to know she's watching too, Cody. What up, Grandma? <laughs> I have all my, are all your chicken breasts like the same size, Cody? Uh, no, I just pulled out one of these big daddies right here. 
Yeah, one is mine is like gigantic, so this one's probably gonna take a little bit longer to cook. But we'll come, we'll cross, we'll get to that for what's it called? Cross that bridge when we come to it. Also, someone suggested that you put the dry ingredients in them and shake it around. Oh yeah, I do that when I'm making um, like fried chicken with flour. It doesn't work so well to put everything in a in a bag. I I mean I found if it works for you, you know, do the method that works for you. But I found um, it works better with the plate for with panko. Just because you kind of have to even like press it on a little bit. All right. So now that our chickens are all breaded, and I'm even oh you guys can see it. I want to show you. I literally am like taking some of it and like pressing it into it too because it helps it stick. And then I'll get rid of these eggs and make my stir. Ooh, I don't know who's gonna clean this up, but it's not gonna be me. <laughs> You're making a mess over there? Nah, but I'm just letting it be known. That you're not cleaning? No, Wait, I'm so not cleaning. Do you have method? Like, if someone cooks, someone else has to clean? Because I'm really trying to institute that. That's the way I think it should be, but apparently it's not that way. <laughs> I'm apparently, really trying if to you cook, that you gotta over clean here. too. <laughs> I thought it was. Oh, what can you do with the extra egg? You can't really do anything unless you're going to make chicken parmesan in the, like the next three days or something else that requires breading. Um, because you just put. Uh, like raw chicken in there so you can't really reuse it for anything unfortunately all right so now cody before we start cooking our chicken we need to put our delicious stuffing inside that we made you just got to find the pocket that you made earlier and stuff and hopefully it's not too hot anymore you can touch it with your hands look it's so i want to show you guys it's like so cheesy and amazingly delicious and we're just going to stuff that in there not too much because otherwise it's just going to fall out when you start cooking it. So generally chicken parmesan doesn't have stuffing, but I thought, you know, let's get some extra vegetables in here. Get fancy because we're, you know, we're here with Chef Cody. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to make something too simple with Chef Cody. Yeah, don't make me seem bougie now. <laughs> I'm still humble about myself. <laughs> what are your some of your like childhood favorite foods? Because you're from Louisiana, so Creole. Food. I, the um, the obvious like Cajuns, Cajun foods. Um, but like, I know my top three meals. One of my top three meals is definitely rice and gravy. It's definitely what. Rice and gravy. Oh, rice and gravy. I don't think I've ever even had that. I'm from California. And that's not so popular <laughs> out there. Question. Question. So what's that? Their screen froze. They put egg in the chicken mixture. Yes, we put egg in our chicken mixture. And then we sure. dipped our chicken in our panko. This is not All right. Sorry. So now that is the last. We're heating the oven. So, yeah, the oven is on. It's Cody. Yeah, Cody, your oven's on, right? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm just playing, yeah, it's home. Okay. Oh, a jokester, too. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So now that was the last time you really had to touch your chicken with your hands because you can use tongs from this point forward. We're going to heat up our pan again with some olive oil. Question. Someone said you don't know what rice and gravy is. Maybe we need to hang up on her. No, I don't know what rice and gravy I mean, I'm assuming it's just you rice. Made, what did you make yesterday? Etouffee. I made shrimp etouffee yesterday for one of my virtual classes. And oh yeah, I made beignets. Do you like beignets? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you can come get this extra dough because um, I don't need to eat any more beignets. <laughs> so now we want to heat up our oil so that it's a good temperature because if we put our chicken in and it's too cold, it's just going to make our chicken greasy and the breading's not going to, the breading's going to fall off. So we want our chicken, our oil to be hot enough. So if you need to test your oil, you can um, put a little drop of water, not a ton, 
and it'll like splat back at you, that means it's ready to go. <laughs> Question. Um, your mom's right. cooking along today. What kind of pan are you cooking the chicken in? Oh, my mom is cooking along? That's interesting. Oh, hey, mom. That never happens. Um, we are using a nonstick skillet. A well, I'm using a nonstick. I think Cody's using a nonstick skillet. Take a taste of it. Oh. Very good, man. Oh, Cody, also turn on your water for your broccoli right now. How much water are you using for broccoli? Um, I have my saucepan, like, three-fourths of the way full. Which one? The big one or the small one? The big one. Yeah. Well, it depends how much broccoli you have. We have two bags. What kind you got? Uh, what kind of broccoli? How much you oh, how much I have? I have... This broccoli is old. <laughs> I have two stocks of broccoli. We got this broccoli. Oh, you yeah, have those. Okay, yeah, so one bag, you could use the booter pot. Oh, uh, yeah, we got two bags. Oh, yeah, use the bigger pot for those then. Question? Uh, what? Uh, oh, what kind of oil are you cooking in? And also, what is Cody's favorite meal is mom cooks? I am using olive oil because I don't, uh, I think it adds better flavor to chicken parmesan. And we'll wait till Cody comes back so we can have his full attention for this question. He's currently filling up a pot with water. Um, also, if you guys are just joining us, we are making chicken stuffed chicken parmesan um, with Chef Cody. <laughs> And we are going to be making some garlic broccoli to go along with it. And so far, we have already marinated our chicken, stuffed, made our filling, stuffed our filling, and even breaded our chicken. And we're just waiting for our oil to get hot. And Cody, what is your favorite meal that your mom makes was the question for you. Um, probably her gumbo. Her gumbo? Gumbo, for sure. Nice. All right, so I think my, my oil, I'm pretty sure, is definitely hot. So I'm going to, I'm actually just going to use my hands to put it in. And you want to put it in the, it's hard to see now, but the, like, more rounded way, not the flat way of your chicken, the, like, top of your chicken. And your pan, I saw your pan earlier. You could probably only fit two, two chicken breasts in there at a time. This one is gigantic. I think I can only fit one in my pan, actually. I'm going to have to. Mm -hmm. Also, you Cody, Mike said hi. Oh, so for those of you guys who are joining us, we're making chicken parmesan, and Cody, Mike says hi. And also, what's in the chicken parmesan? Oh, what's in the chicken parmesan? We made a, we made a spinach and mozzarella stuffing, and now we're just, we're not cooking our chicken completely in the pan, we're just browning it, so it's only going to be like a minute, like this chicken's probably already done, yep. And I'm going to flip it over. And Cody, when you flip over your chicken, be really careful that you don't spill out the filling. So just be aware of that. You want it, You want your chicken to be like a light golden brown color. I'll bring mine over to show you what it looks like. So this is what my chicken looks like everyone. It's light and gold. Oh yeah, there you go. That's perfect. So now we're going to take it out and put it on a pan, like a sheet pan like this. I like to put aluminum foil on it so then I don't have to clean it so hard later. Do that. And when you're making, if you're making a lot of chicken parmesan, you might have to put more oil in the pan um, as you continue to put chicken in because the oil is getting absorbed by the breadcrumbs. And the oil is what helps it make it crispy. Are you all done with your three already or just a two, Cody? Just two. Okay, cool. I said you need to slow down. Cody was an all-special red class. What? Cody is doing a great job. Apparently, apparently some people are saying you're going a little slow over there, Cody. <laughs> what do you say? 
He was looking at the comments. Who who talking the most shit? Cannon. Don't let them. Don't let them. Uh, hold you back. Man, I ain't worried about none of them people. <laughs> I'm gonna eat good. Good. Open the grill. So, Cody, you play a lot of video games right now during quarantine or off season, right? Yeah, I play a few video games here and there. What are what is, what's your favorite game to play? NBA 2K, Madden, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Probably in that order too. Yeah. I do not play video games, but I know what those are. <laughs> yeah, I probably I probably play 2K uh, for quite a few few hours. So you don't play any football video games though. Yeah, I play Madden. Oh, Madden. You did say Madden. Is it, are you in the video game now? Yeah, I'm in there. How is, do you play with yourself? Oh, that sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I put myself in the game. But do you, like, yeah, put be yourself in the game? <laughs> yeah, I definitely put, uh, put myself in the game. <laughs> so how is living in Buffalo? Uh, It's cool. I mean, it's cold, but... And this year wasn't that cold. I live in the city, so this year wasn't even the coldest year it could be, right? Yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, the community's great and everything. Um, the fans are awesome. So that that was cool, but... Yeah, you guys have some die-hard fans. Like, oh, yeah, they love die-hard deal. fans. <laughs> they love them. <laughs> so that's cool that you get to play in an environment like that. But you also, you're, like, played at Oklahoma, and those fans are pretty intense, too, right? Yeah, they're probably, uh, they're not as crazy, but. You've been to both stadiums. They go hard. Yeah. What? So, are all your chickens done now? Yeah, all of mine. Wow. All right, cool. So, you can put them, if they're on the sheet tray, you can put them right in the oven? Top rack, middle rack, we'll, we'll wrap. Uh, on the top rack, I guess. Middle rack, top or middle? Question? Um, someone asked a question a long time ago about who cleans the chopped kitchen. Who cleans the chopped kitchen? Oh, yeah, so, Cody, I'm going to be on Chopped Champions on Tuesday. So, I guess someone just asked who cleans the chopped kitchen. Um, a lot. I think there's, like, a whole team of, like, kitchen assistants and PAs that clean the kitchen every single round. And we make a gigantic mess. Like <laughs> How long are we leaving this in here for? Um, we're going to leave it for like uh, 20 minutes or so. It'll probably be done. It's, it's kind of hard to tell because all chicken breasts are like different sizes, you know? So my smaller chicken breasts will probably be done in like 15 minutes or so. But the bigger one will probably take a good 20. Um, do you happen to have a, a kitchen thermometer? Yeah, I do. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. I told you, bro. I'm big chef. <laughs> nah, I just got. I just got to find it. Code. That's on the uh, But I do have one. Oh, it's right here. All right, awesome. So the way you can really tell when chicken is done is by temping it, and it should be 165. So we'll check it once we <laughs> um, finish our broccoli, and then hopefully it's done because this. Oh yeah, look at look at you, Cody. Come on, man. Wait, what you be temping? Steaks? <laughs> Steaks, chicken. Oh yeah, you know, I I really cook I really do this for real, for real. You really cook? Yeah. So tell us the menu for this upcoming week for your uh chefing this. Uh well I mean I don't I don't really throw down like that, you know. <laughs> oh uh, no, you probably you don't like tomorrow, to play, right? <laughs> tomorrow we're gonna have some chicken tacos. Beef, my bad. Can you move? Can you move the camera to your face again? Sorry. All right. There you go. So tomorrow you're gonna have chicken beef tacos. Beef tacos. And Tuesday, tomorrow Monday. 
Tuesday, uh, we're going to have takeout. Tonight. Supporting local businesses during yeah. the quarantine. I like it. And then Wednesday, we'll probably have some, uh, some more steaks and some potatoes and some, uh, some broccoli again. Like I said, I only eat broccoli for some reason. And broccoli is a, it's a very easy, I think it's a, a lot of kids' first vegetable, a lot of kids anyway. I have to cut my broccoli up because it's not nicely washed and neat in a bag like yours was. So I'm just going to chop mine up while my water is boiling. How is your, is your water almost boiling? Yeah, it's pretty hot. Is, is it boiling or is it just hot? It's <laughs> just hot. It's steamy right now. Okay, so we're going to wait till it gets to a boil. And we're going to do a technique called blanching. Any idea what that is? No, I ain't never heard of that one before. <laughs> so it's basically you're going to put, we're going to put our broccoli in for like a minute or two. Um, just, well, actually, let me ask you this. How do you like your broccoli cooked? Are you like a someone that likes texture in their broccoli or like a mushy broccoli person? I like it more mushy. Not really just mushy, mushy, but like I don't like it too hard. And when, when okay. it's too hard, I'd be like, bro, this is not cooked. This is just nasty. Okay, it's so got a little bit of softness to it. I'm cool. You're 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 that person. So you're gonna you're always that person. <laughs> You're going to blanch your broccoli for a little bit longer than I'm going to blanch my broccoli. Although Chris is probably not not too happy with that. But I like my broccoli with a little bit of texture. Um, and you also have more nutrients in your broccoli when it has more texture. Question? Uh, the fans of Buffalo want to know what Cody, what is Chris's uh, favorite, uh, I guess, wing spot in Buffalo? Oh, Cody, what's your favorite wing spot in Buffalo? Barbell. Barbell? Barbell go hard. Do you like like hot wings or do you like a different flavor better? I like I don't like their suicidal, I will say that. Barbell has this one wing called suicidal and it's not the it's not the funnest. It's not fun at all. It's like super hot? Yeah. It, it's yeah, it's pretty hot. Would you ever go on that show, uh, Hot Ones? If they would ever email me. <laughs> I would never go on that show. I would love to go on that show. You said what? I would love to go on there. Really? Yeah. I like. I cannot handle heat at all. I would. Yeah, no. <laughs> They'd be sweating, like crying with their eyes. It's a lot on that show. Um. All right. So once our water is boiling, we want to salt our water so we add our flavor because broccoli doesn't have that much flavor, and salt always adds flavor. So we want to add a good amount of salt to our water. I saw earlier you're not shy with the salt, so you know what to do there. Gang, gang. <laughs> this ain't that much, girl. Quiet. Don't worry, it's not going to absorb that much. That's what I'm saying. She overreacting. She's she's your your oh. sous chef is trying to take a lead in the kitchen here. And then once it's once your water's boiling, you're going to go ahead and add in your broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> so the best way to know that the broccoli is the texture that you like it is to just take one out and taste it once it's cooked for a little while um just to get used to it but i would say at, you're going to want to cook yours for at least three minutes so at 7 45 if our lovely technological guru christopher <laughs> tell us <laughs> let me know when it's 7 45 okay it's 7 45 oh on that, three minutes. So yeah. Just put his broccoli. And then we are going to step our broccoli up, just like we stepped our chicken parmesan up. And we are going to saute it in some garlic. So do you have some garlic cloves over there, Cody? Oops. Yeah, I got so. All right. So we are going to peel them and slice they them up. Already, they already peeled. Hey, oh, oh, you're ready to go. I use my resources around here. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll be peeling my garlic like a peasant over here. <laughs> and I'm actually very happy that you have peeled garlic and not um, not like already chopped up garlic. I'm really not a fan of that stuff. It makes your garlic taste really sharp. All right. So now that my garlic is peeled, we're going to slice it. So you got to show off your chef skill, your knife skills one more time, Cody. 
adjust the camera again. Adjust the camera so the people want to see. How many clothes? Two clothes. <laughs> oh, we should have said. <laughs> Cody, do you know how to make gumbo for yourself? Someone just asked. Yeah, I made some the other day. Not the other day. Uh, last month. Sous chef, was the gumbo good? Did you taste it? It was good. <laughs> so we're just slicing our garlic. And this is literally, you could use as much or as little garlic as you want. I think that two cloves is a good starting point. It's not too garlicky. It's like middle of the road. But if you're super into garlic, feel free to use as much garlic as you want. Also, someone wanted to run down chopped and what's going on in Tuesday. And also, they actually have a nod for me. Okay, so I have two questions. The first question, oh, so on Tuesday, I'm going to be on Chopped, and I'm hosting a whole Chefling Cella. So I hope to see you there with your festival fits on. I will be doing a live stream where I'm making buffalo chicken dip, Chopped Pop, and a Casaline, what did I call it? I forgot my own creative name for my uh, margarita that I'm making. <laughs> and then we're going to watch the show, and then I will have a live question and answer with Kimmy Rubestein on Instagram. So I hope to see you guys there. Are you gonna are you gonna pop through the party, Cody? I'll pop up. <laughs> Roll through. And um the other question that I just had was what kind of knives do I like? Um so I think everyone should have a really good chef's knife in their house. And my favorite brand is Victorinox. I hope I'm saying that right. It's a Swiss brand. Um, and they have a great starter knife for anyone. It's light. It's a German style knife, but it's light. It's not heavy like Ooh, normal German knives, which are heavier, because it's not, the handle's not made out of metal, but what I really like about it is that it can get sharpened very easily, so it lasts a long time. All right, I think my broccoli's, my broccoli's done to my liking, so I'm going to strain out mine, but Cody's is Cody, we're going to let yours rock for another minute or so. All right, cool. How small do you want to chop the garlic? Oh, so I made my garlic into slices. So you like that. Broccoli is a good, it can stand up to like big pieces of garlic. Woo. So Cody, what made you um, decide to move to Oklahoma? Because you just bought a house, right? Yeah, I bought one in here in Oklahoma. So why Oklahoma? You're from Louisiana. You play in New York or yeah, in Buffalo. Uh, mainly because I can come back here and work out for free. So, <laughs> so uh, it was a uh, that, uh, that, and it's close to uh, close to Dallas, and then it's also still close to home. I didn't want to live at home, so I just bought. So you would say Oklahoma is like a nice place to live. Oh yeah, it's it's got good weather. I mean. Like right now, it's kind of crappy weather because it is in a tornado heaven. But yeah, that's I've never being from California. Everyone makes fun of earthquakes, but Oklahoma just always reminds me of tornadoes. Yeah, but I'm I've never been in one for four years since I've been here. I've never been in one. Oh, okay. Does your house have a basement? No. Oh. No basement. My one. Don't you don't you need basements for tornadoes? Oh, that's true. No. <laughs> Chris is over questioning my knowledge. Oh, sorry for the um, the siren going by. New York City is extra live all what? the time. No. Question? Um, what else does Cody have to do on the chopping? If not, can we adjust the camera? So oh, yeah. So you can adjust your camera back to your face because we are done chopping. We're basically you done. Can in frame all of our work. Time. I know. Be on the other hand, a little too tall. Everyone wants to see your pretty face, Cody. They want to see your. It ain't so pretty. If I had a haircut, I wish I had a haircut. <laughs> Is that the I'm, hardest thing? What is the hardest thing right now about being on lockdown? Because I know you're pretty like, um, you like to stay to yourself pretty much anyway. You know, you don't you don't really need to be out so much. But is this like intense for you to just have to be in all the time? Nah, I mean I'm cool with being in. I just I just need a haircut. I mean, I I just feel like I feel like I'm I'm dirty. But like I know I'm not. For one, I don't need a house. But I just look like. I don't 